Hello, and welcome to Create a Life You Love. I truly believe that each and every one of us has a dharma, a purpose, a calling, something that drives us. And I love interviewing people who have taken their passion and turned it into their purpose and made that a viable career. Today, I'm talking with Sarah and Rich, who are two of my favorite chiropractors, and they're here to share with you their journey. Hi, guys. How are you? Hi. Very We're good. good. <laughs> Thanks so much for being on the show. It's such an honor to have you here. Well, thank you for the invite. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. So for those who are listening who don't know what chiropractic care is, would one of you like to give a brief description of what chiropractic care is? Oh, sure. Uh, chiropractic care, uh, a lot of times people don't quite understand that every time a person's touched, every time a person has worked with, they might think that chiropractic care involves muscles and joints and bones popping and things like that. But it's, it's more along the lines of we touch you and your body has to cope, react, and look at itself and chiropractic as a whole is more along the lines of a neurologic event. It's not, it's not about um, making you stronger, it's not about changing your physiology as much as it's about cha you changing your own physiology. So you can kind of sum chiropractic up as applied neurology. Okay. It's, it's about that. It's not, again, it's, um, it's nothing that is going to alter you as a person. It's not a mechanical event. Okay, perfect. Now, when people go in for uh, a chiropractic appointment, and I've gone for chiropractic, and I have to tell you, it's one of my favorite things. It's, when I leave a chiropractor's office, I feel light and, and, and just balanced. Mm -hmm. And when somebody goes in for a chiropractic appointment, they get what's called an adjustment in yes. most cases. So for those, again, who haven't had an adjustment, could you take a moment to explain exactly what an adjustment is? Um, sure. Um, well, I'll explain a little bit and no, then Sarah, Sarah mm -hmm. will too. So an adjustment, as I was talking before with the ner nervous system being involved, when, we, when you get adjusted, it's an awareness event. So chiropractic itself, an adjustment can be anything from a subtle pressure, nine ounces, which is the weight of a dime, to a few hundred pounds of thrust. And the chiropractor, whoever you see, most likely has a different way to treat every person according to what they need. So that adjustment will vary per person. So that adjustment, again, is a point where we're creating awareness in the body so that the body then can heal itself. Yes, which it, that's, that's a beautiful way of explaining it. So not a lot of people know about chiropractor, and if they do, they don't know a lot about chiropractic care. How did you, Sarah, first <laughs> learn about uh, chiropractic care? What um, was your first? Well, yeah. chiropractic, uh, chiropractic was something my family utilized since I was little, my father is a logger. And so with that, with the profession, you get aches, you get pains, and he would utilize chiropractic instead of pain meds um, to make his body work better and to get out of pain quickly. And then when I was in junior high, <clears throat> I was uh, laying on the ground and my brother came up and kicked me in the back. Who knows why, this sibling rivalry. Um, but I was stuck in a bent over position for a while. So my mother took me to a chiropractor and 15 minutes later, I walked out like nothing had ever happened. So I got to see how powerful it could be right there and then. That's, that's an amazing share. That's very cool. You're very fortunate to have grown up with chiropractic care also. Yeah. Rich, what was your first, how did you learn about chiropractic care? Uh, I was three or four years old. We used to see uh, a Dr. Novak who lived in, who practiced in, and lived in Cudahy, Wisconsin. 
Uh, he's a real interesting guy. He, he had the biggest hands I've ever seen on a person his size. I suppose a three-year-old would <laughs> But still, his hands are big. Uh, and we'd go to his clinic, and he practiced in a business, uh, business building, and he, he had a, a 10 chairs that would sit inside his office. However, when you'd pull up to his uh, clinic, his, his space, you'd actually have to stand in line, which sometimes went around the block. Wow. So you talk 50, 60 people waiting. Uh, and he'd do that. He had a session in the morning and a session in the evening. And he'd be busy like that every single day. So, well, anyways, as a child, I was just wondering why we'd wait in this line. So I do remember my very first visit. We'd wait in line, and he'd finally make it up the stairs. And then he'd sit, and he'd walk around. And uh, at the time, we didn't have soap notes, which is like the standard medical note. He had a little postcard that he'd put all your information on. And then he'd lay you down. and. He'd either put a massager on you or put a little infrared heat on, and then he would adjust you. And even as a child, I thought it was pretty amazing that, and this was manual adjusting, so he'd push onto your back and you'd feel your little bones pop, doo -doo -doo, and it felt so great. I know. And, and it, was, it was fantastic, and, and I never really considered, and, and throughout the years, if I'd have injuries with sports or my mom and dad would just go to get adjusted, I would go with them. And uh, when I was in college, I wanted to be a medical doctor. That's what I thought. Uh, but Destiny had a little different plan for me. <laughs> I was in a multi-car pileup on my way to animal behavior class when I was attending UW-Milwaukee. Uh, and I, yeah, from the accident, I couldn't turn my head. It was, I was pretty racked up. Uh, that evening, I had gone to the ER. They gave me muscle relaxers and anti-inflammatories, and this was time when anti-inflammatories were new and all it did was give me a bad stomach ache and I couldn't even move. And so I uh, ended up at a chiropractor's office. And again, never thinking about this, but I walked out. I wasn't in pain. Right. I, st I, I still hurt. It took me about four years to fully recover from my injuries from the accident. But if I didn't see the chiropractor, I never would have recovered. And that is when I was Still, for between that time, still thinking I was going to be a medical doctor. But the medical model of healing and life didn't suit my needs, and chiropractic did. And that's why I wanted to be a chiropractor. That's awesome. And Sarah, now that's, thank you for sharing that because that is so powerful. And there's just so much information in that statement. And just, I love that. Thank you for sharing because My pleasure. that is right on, <laughs> right? Like hammer, nail, hitting it. So why, what drove you? What was your, I need to be a chiropractor? Well, or I want to be yeah, a chiropractor? Um, I, I grew up as a slightly chubby child and I was aware of it um, and I think I was in fifth or sixth grade and I started to become more health conscious and mm -hmm. watching what I ate I started playing sports and got really involved in that and from there it was looking at magazines and seeing what the new trend was in health or whatnot um, and kind of did that throughout junior high into high school and then it came time to well what do I want to what do I want to do for a career and so I was weighing between, I thought, well, chiropractic sound kind of like healthy and PT did too, but I didn't really know what the differences were. So once I did a little bit of research, I discovered that chiropractic was much more in line with what I wanted. It, it was more of a whole body approach. It wasn't just like where PT was more exercise to fix muscles that are imbalanced. Chiropractic was fixing the body through nutrition, through um, adjustments, through mental state, you know, just the way you think. And so it just was much more in line with the direction I wanted to go with in life. So it was kind of a quick no-brainer. I was like, I figured it out. And when I went to college, it was I set up everything, like all my classes. I knew what I was going to take to get through as fast as possible because it was, it's a long haul, and so I just wanted to be the most efficient I could be to get through there. So let's talk about that. Now, people might not know, to be a chiropractor, you're in school for a while. Yeah. So oh, yes. how long are you in school for? Well, the state of Wisconsin requires that you have a BA or BS. 
to be a chiropractor. So you do have to have a Bachelor's of Arts or Bachelor of Science. Uh, interestingly, you don't, have to be a, you don't have to have a BA or BS to be a medical doctor. <laughs> just to let you know, in the state of Wisconsin. <laughs> so you technically have more schooling than a medical doctor. Well, at least or, you're supposed to have a little more yes. schooling. But I don't, you, yeah, I don't. I don't that many go through <laughs> without. They usually do get their BA or BS. But yeah. anyways, um, chiropractic school does mirror medical school. The way the laws are set up nationally is that chiropractic school parallels medical school. Uh, we have to know what a medical doctor knows. Uh, we do have more hours in radiology, we have more hours in anatomy than a medical student does, and we have nutrition, which they get nothing. Yeah. So uh, when it comes down to class time, the lowest credit load I ever went to, and we went to both the same chiropractic college, uh, was 28 credits for a semester. And wow. we, we did trimesters, and so it was very intense. Uh, Due to my sports, I, I was a bicycle racer, I took summers off, so it took me a full four years to get through my chiropractic school. And uh, it was three and a half for you? Something like that. I mean, I, I was, I started out at Michigan Tech, Technological University in the UP. Um, there I went straight through summers. I think I had one the last summer I had off. Um, and I was in a pre-med program there with a bunch of other soon-to-be doctors and dentists and whatnot. So we were all taking the same courses. And then when I finished the three years, I had enough credits, I transferred over to um, the uh, University Chiropractic College, um, Northwestern College of Chiropractic. And I think it's changed to Northwestern Health Science University okay. while I was there. Um, they took on acupuncture also. Nice. But um, then, it was another, I think, three years, and I went straight through. I, I didn't take any summers off. I just, I think I was done in total about six and a half years, so. Wow. So now, you started at UWM, you already yes. mentioned, and then you ended up? At Northwestern, but years before her. <laughs> so we do, we do have some, some time span before that or a time gap between each other. Uh, what was yeah, our... so he would tell me like, do you remember this? And I would be like, that's not there anymore. Do they still have this club? I, I started it. No, that's Yeah, not the there. club you started is gone now. Oh, sorry, well, it's... your legacy has not gone What on. we had done is we, uh, when I was in the college, uh, I at times really wanted to make sure we were integrated with medicine. I still had that mindset when I was in school. I was very analytical we started rotations with U of M Medical College. And so then the medical students could come and rotate at chiropractic school and we could go there. The only problem was is that we had a very low medical to chiropractic as we would go and watch surgeries, we would go through and look at everything that they would be doing since we paralleled, but they had no clue what we were doing. And then after I got into practice here in the States, uh, in, in the Wisconsin, in the state, I found out that most medical doctors really don't know what we do. No. They're, they're completely oblivious. They don't, they don't, they don't get it, but I, I don't, you know, uh, I'm not mad at them for that. Huh. But when you talk to them and if you speak to them, and that's where when I go about the applied neurology, if we talk in vocabulary that they understand, they get it. But if you don't and you start talking wishy-washy and it sounds as if you're a um, watered-down physical therapist or personal trainer, I wouldn't want to trust me either. Yeah, I completely understand that. So I'm going to ask Rich, where was your first job out of college? Uh, well, I started working for uh, a chiropractor in uh, West Dallas, and with that, he had a medical contract with uh, Wisconsin Health Fund, which is the medical center that took care of all the team, local Teamster 200 members. Okay. And so uh, we got into there, not really knowing what was gonna happen, but it turned into something incredible. I learned so much. Uh, they had 11 departments, many, many medical doctors, uh, and I was roughly working with well over 1,000 people a month just doing chiropractic care along. We would see things that my, my teachers in school and chiropractic college told me, if you see it in a lifetime, you'll be lucky. I hit every one of those. 
on the list in the first five years in practice. That's amazing. That's really, that's what an incredible experience to be able to take that with you through all of your career, right? Yes. It, was, it was fantastic. I wish every chiropractor could go through that. Yeah. It was such an eye opener. It, it held me to be accountable, so I had to be a good practitioner, but it also allowed me to see how the medical family you might call it like medicine, a clinic, but it's really a family and how everyone works well together and how they take care of each other. So amazing. Yes, and, and so uh, I really did uh, appreciate being able to work with medical doctors at that level. And again, when I was able to communicate what I was doing with them and understanding that it was really about neurology, they were very respectful. Uh, and even to this day, my number one referral are other chiropractors or other or medical doctors. Nice. So I, I, I do appreciate that time there. That's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Now, I, I want to, I know a little bit of your history. So I know you two are married. And when I ask where your first job is, it's going to, you can kind of tell also the story of how you two originally met yeah. if you would like. Uh, well, my first job was in New Berlin, and okay. I was a scared new doctor, and I didn't know what I was doing. And I thought, I was looking for a, a doctor to kind of mentor me and show me the ropes. And it didn't quite turn out that way as okay. I had hoped. So I'd like to actually consider my first job to be with Rich. Um, okay. I interviewed with him, and just by seeing his enthusiasm to teach, he was more than willing to show me the ways or, you know, to... Let me inject something here. But I did interview a dozen other chiropractors, and she was the only one who got mad when she got questions wrong. Aww. So that's why I was so impressed with her tenacity, and uh, I never... No one ever got mad in front of me. So <laughs> Frustrated, I would say frustrated. <laughs> Um, frustrated that I didn't know these things that I should have known. I just felt like I should know this. Why don't I? Um, and so by watching him, how he treated people, how he assessed, that was the big thing is how, his, how he assessed people. It just gave me the, a, a way to treat a patient and not question myself as to where do I adjust them? How do I adjust them? I knew every time just by the assessment. So that was what I was most impressed with, and I knew like this is the place I need to work with, um, work. And so he hired me, thankfully, and um, it worked out because now we've got two children also on top of um, <laughs> working so, together. But a little off topic, <laughs> when you first saw him, of course you wanted him to mentor you. Yes. But did you did you think right away? I'm working, my boss is cute, my boss Aww. is, I kind he of. He reminded me of somebody else that I was like, oh, and then I was like, oh, he's kind of a know-it-all, but that's okay, because <laughs> um, it turned out he did know a bunch, so it wasn't, you know, an unjust know-it-all. <laughs> and I guess it's unfair since you were interviewing to have her as an employee to ask, did you know right away, like, no, not no. at all. Oh, that's yeah, so we didn't really look at each other that way, but just as time went on, uh, we had so much in common and just just chiropractic itself and you know talking about diet and we're always looking to improve ourselves and to cook better food or oh, um, different that. health fads and assessing them and you know is it something we, that's you know something we should go down or supplements and just I don't know we can talk about health for a long time but, you know as long as most people's ears would start to fall off we can keep going. But she was also really good in, <clears throat> to, for us to get out in the public. We'd go to bicycle, bicycle races, we'd sponsor bike races, uh, we'd go to running races and just set up shop and sit and talk to people. And we, of course, you know, the whole object was to get out and meet people and potentially have patients. Uh, but even when I didn't want to go, sh she's like, I'm going. <laughs> push them. She would push, she would push. And or that, I would that just go. Thing. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> or she would just go. That would be, be it. So she yeah. had that, that she had that hunger to go out and to yeah. talk to people and I to learn. That. Well, I liked working with the athletes, especially. That was just, it was fun time. So being on site at the bike races, um, and they would come to you, and you would treat them there on the spot. And then they'd go jump into their race, and they'd have an amazing race and come back and go, 
I don't know what you did, right? but I was in the front the whole time, or I won the race, or they were just, they could see improvements, and that's really, I, I enjoy the, not having the approach of taking away pain, but actually improving the body, you know, taking a body that didn't have pain, just wanted to be physically better, and they were living examples of that. And I think that's something, people wait until something goes wrong a lot of times to get care. With this, you can go in, you can just maintain health, strengthen yeah. health, which is simply amazing. And I, I, I'm just going to say it again. Every time I've gone to the chiropractor and I walk out, there's a known improvement. Like I feel an improvement in it, uh, it might not be, I was in a pretty, um, I was rear-ended by two cars also, so I went through a series of chiropractic appointments, and you know, it, every time it, I left, there was, I felt better. It, it might not have been 100% right away, mm -hmm. but there was, <clears throat> it was better. My movement, my agility, all of that, was getting better with each and every visit and no medication because I'm allergic to pain meds. So I'm allergic to antibiotics. And so th that those segues aren't available. Uh, segues, is that the right? Those paths aren't yeah. available for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so having this alternative path of alternative care is so, so empowering. So let's talk a little bit about what can chiropractic care help? Now you've mentioned Teamsters, you've mentioned athletes. What can chiropractic care help? Now I know it's amazing for neuropathy, but I'll let you guys go on about this. Okay, well, whenever we look at chiropractic, I uh, hate to say it, but it's from the cradle to the grave. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and the reason I hate to say that though is it sounds like a, a cliche, like how can you have something that can span the test of time. Well, you think about it, birth is the most traumatic experience. And when you, uh, when you adjust a baby, when if, uh, and like our children were adjusted right out of the womb, uh, you're only using, I use my pinky to adjust them, so if I'm pushing up like that, that's a baby's adjustment. But to, to, to go through the process of birth is very traumatic for a child. Uh, and when I was at the Teamsters, I, I got to see children who their collarbones were broke, mm -hmm. that they had different parts of their spine broke by traumatic births. You know, a birth is, uh, I've seen births that are traumatic. They're not pretty. So if I'm using a pinky, there's no way I'm going to hurt a baby. Right. And with it, we work with, and so I'm just going to stick with a baby right now for a second, is we can work with their stomach, we can work with their head to help form it so it's nice and circular. We work with their palate to make sure that that works. Uh, when we work with their stomach and viscera, th this is to make them so their digestion works better. We teach the parents how to do these things themselves so that they can empower themselves. And then as you go through the, that whole gamut of what else can you do, of course you know about the headaches, the low back pain, the mid back pain. You have those mechanical things where maybe an event occurred and so that joint is off or mechanically. That's the time when you go in there and you work on somebody and it's, boom, it's a quick fix. I put it back in place in a sense. It wasn't fully, as I call, sub medically subluxated where it's a joint is out of place completely, but it's just dysfunctional. That stuff heals fast. But then you have it where the body does things and it does it purposefully, but people don't like it. But that's when you come in and you get those tendonitises and you get those bursitises. And chiropractic does work with that, but that's when we have to look at it and say, you have to break a tendency. You have to break a lifestyle. As what, <clears throat> right now, what we've been working on from going more or less along the lines of working with people, with the, like Sarah was talking about, with the low back pain or something like that, she loved working with athletes because they wanted that heightened performance. Mm -hmm. Well, what I've been doing now uh, for a long time and is picking up more and more as we work with a person, but right when they come in there, we interview them to see, are you a patient for us? Because I can do my passive care with you. I can adjust you, but if you don't take care of yourself, you're probably not gonna get well. And if you don't get well, you're gonna say chiropractic's not a good fit for people. 
were a fit for them. Right. So I think just as I have to be responsible for the care that I give to people, they have to be responsible. And if I make a suggestion, you need to clean up your diet. You need to go for a walk during lunch. You need to do that. So yeah, there's only so much that we can do in a 15 minute span. It's the person's life. That's right. what they're doing on a daily basis, all day long or whatnot, that needs to and change. We can just help been. them become aware of it. Right, exactly. And what they have been doing up until that point yeah. also. So let's, um, what, can you believe we're almost out of time wow. already? Oh. I know, right? <laughs> we'll have to come back and do another one to cover everything else. But really quick, if someone comes into your clinic, tell people, the, first of all, the name of your clinic and what they'll find inside of your clinic. Oh, sure. That's, that's a great question. <laughs> so our clinic is called Center of Gravity. Excellent. The best uh, place to reach us, or the fastest way to reach us, is at 414-282-9500. Or you can visit our website, which is cog4, the number 4, life.com, or cogforlife.com. Now, inside our clinic, when you walk in, we just recently created our new space. And that yes. space, we're very excited about it. I like to be there. Uh, and believe me, in the past when I'd have clinics, go and see patients and get out. Well, anyways, we have a gym, so we can get people to exercise. We do small niche classes where we limit the number between four and six people for members. We also have our chiropractic section. We have a, our, uh, I guess you'd see our massage room where we do have therapists work with people. In the front, we have a cafe where we serve organic teas and coffees. Yeah, the difference there is instead of normal coffee shops, we use food-grade essential oils. We use different types of milk uh, choices so that a person really is getting something healthier for them and not just a sugar fix. We, use, uh, we don't use artificial sugar substitutes, but we use things that you won't find at any other place. So we're looking to, again, have something that is unique for us, and again, we're really proud of. Excellent, that's so. beautiful. Thank you, Sarah and Rich, so much for being on the show today. It's such an honor and a pleasure for me to learn all of this about chiropractic care, and we're going to have to do this again because I know we could literally talk about this for five days straight, <laughs> all the benefits and the care of it. And I, I love that. So thank you so very yeah. much for being here. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on Create a Life You Love. For more information on uh, Sarah and Rich, please feel free to visit their website, which is listed right below us. And you can also visit my website, Tony, T-O-N-I-G dot info. Thank you again for watching. Until next time, create a life you love. Thank you.